All through the book of Acts, He moved in signs and wonders and miracles through the apostles, through the believers, to demonstrate that He was Christ, the Son of God. Acts 2, verse 41 and 44. I saw something else here that I believe is a key for us to move into the greater things. The greater things of God. To release a greater glory. A greater anointing. A greater presence. Full of greater signs and wonders and miracles. I mean, I watched Dale Rawson receive a miracle right before our eyes. Over about a ten minute period, the Lord just ministered. Changed their lives. Healed his body. It was the most, man, so incredible. He made Dale a sign and a wonder <laughs> for the world to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that they might have life through his name. 41, verse, chapter 2, verse 41 says this Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. God hasn't changed His pattern. Listen. And in breaking the bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. There's a key to moving in what the early apostles moved in. They were in unity. They had got over their worldly possessions. They had got over their, this is mine. I work for this. This is mine. This is, this is my house. This is my property. It says they sold all that stuff. They even gave up their homes and their houses and their properties. Man, that's a little radical, don't you think? Yeah. It's exactly what it takes if you want the real. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking of bread and in prayers. Fear came upon them. Many signs and wonders were done. They believed they were together and had all things common. And all the haves, they say, oh, I don't know about that. And all the have-nots, they say, oh, yeah, that's Scripture. Yeah, give me, give me, give me. I don't have it, so give it to me. Both are wrong. You don't have it maybe because you're not willing to give it. God won't give it to you if He can't get it through you. But if you're willing, if you want this more than what you have, if you want this more than your possessions, if you want this more than what you possess, I'm telling you, He's going to give it to us. If we just give it all to Him. Lord, it's all Yours. If we begin to understand that we're not owners, we're operators. We're stewards. We operate in this stuff. All of it belongs to God. Let me read some more. Acts chapter 4. I want you to see what I saw. In order for us to step into the greater, to see more of these signs and wonders and miracles, to see a greater manifestation of heaven in the earth. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, see, God already has a plan. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. They were getting some persecution. There was some skepticism. There was some cynicism, some making fun of them, some scoffing at them. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled Together. And they were all filled. Say all. All filled with the Holy Ghost. 
This is after the outpouring of Pentecost. See, you can be refilled, fulfilled, overflowing, fulfilled all over again. Fill, 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 Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the Word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Not just the apostles. All that believed. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. And they laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. I mean, they bought into this deal. They bought into the vision. They bought into to, that God was going to do something greater than this world had ever seen before. They believed. And they said, whatever the price is, I'm going to pay it. Because I saw Jesus Christ give His all for me. And He is the patterned Son. I'm telling you, if we want this, if you want to move into what, what God is calling us, what God has marked us for, you are going to have to be willing to sacrifice more. We've got to be willing to give it all. you got to let go of what you think is yours. Give it all. you got to give it all. Don't be like the rich man ruler. Give it all. You got to let go and want him. Everything. There is a price. There is a cost. But if we want to move in what the early church moved in and greater than that, we've got to be willing to do what they did. The pattern hasn't changed. The God's way hasn't changed. We changed. The church has changed. Who are we really trusting in? What do we really trust in? Where is your trust? Is it in Him? You standing on the Word? Trusting in just the Word of God to take you through. I'm just telling you, this is a picture. I saw it. If we want the greater signs and wonders and miracles, there's a great, there's a cost. We've got to come together, have all things in common. I'm not talking about moving in with each other, but we got to be willing. You got to be willing. To let go. To let Him do whatever He wants to do. If He tells you to give your car away, you need to be willing to do it. If He tells you to sow, to cash in your retirement fund, <laughs> and sow it into the kingdom, you got to be willing. Oh, well, and if we're not, then we won't move in this stuff. It's just the honest truth. Acts chapter 5. It's really a matter of the heart, isn't it? It's not about the stuff. It's about your heart. What's in your heart? Acts 5. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, there's no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets, and they laid them on beds, insomuch that they, beds and on couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. 
there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. See, the early church let go of their old life and their old ways of life. They were completely transformed, radically reformed by the Spirit of God. Everything became different with them. They sold all and they joined, they bought in to the vision, to what God had called them to do. They gave their all. They just went for it. They understood their purpose for being on the earth for their time. Great, I'm telling you, God wants to do greater. Greater, greater miracles. Lee shared with me just in an email, just shortly, just vision he saw wheelchairs coming. Heard wheelchairs are coming. Greater miracles. Greater miracles. Some of you guys have shared visions that you've been having about cars and cars and cars coming into this place. People coming from all over. I'm telling you, if you start manifesting the real stuff by the Spirit of God, true signs and wonders and miracles, people are going to be drawn to it. They're going to come to meet the living God, the Savior of the world. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the thing concerning the kingdom of God. Now, Philip was just one of the deacons in the early church. He wasn't an apostle. He was a believer. See, all those names, all they do is describe their function. It wasn't their position. It was their function. They functioned. Philip was just functioning. Just doing what he was called to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done. God's calling us to this, folks. <laughs> He's calling us to this. We've been marked with His mark for miracles, signs and wonders. Acts chapter 14, verse 3. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of His grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Romans chapter 15, verse 19 says, Through mighty, say mighty, through mighty signs and wonders, the power of the Spirit of God, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So unless we're demonstrating, manifesting by the power of the Holy Spirit, signs and wonders and miracles, we are not fully preaching the gospel. The full gospel has signs and wonders that follow it. Our job is not to work the signs and the wonders. Our job is to preach the gospel. Preach the Word of God. Just keep preaching the truth. Keep telling them about Jesus. Preach the Word and the signs will follow. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit. That's how. Just believe. Be. Just be. Be there. Let God do it. 2 Corinthians 12, 12. Oh, that was pretty cool. Truly the signs of the apostles. Twelve is the number of God's government. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. We have so watered down the Word of God that most of the church world has stopped believing Him for these things. 